Hi. Your teams are so respected for situational football. What was the original influence there, and how has it developed so much through the years? Um, that's a good question. Um, it's always always been a part of what we've done. Um, what I learned as an assistant coach, and then at Cleveland, uh, I think we spent a lot of time out there. Uh, Scott O'Brien, um, Nick Saban, myself, Ernie. Um, it's really trying to grind through every situation. Make sure we're we're doing what we wanted to do in those situations, um, but um, situational plays have been in football forever. So I'd say a lot of ours probably go back to that time. Hey, Bill, um, you've been through this weekly process a lot. In your experience, when does the energy of the week start to really turn a corner? toward the game? Is it when you have to stop talking to us every single day? Mm, yeah, I think there's there's energy every day. And each week's different. Each game's different. Each team's different. So I don't know what the answer to that question is. I think it just depends on your team and where you're at and how your team responds to each, each event that you do. Um, and we do it a little differently every week, depending on who our opponent is and what our needs are for that game. So... They're not really all the same. Hopefully it'll turn out that our high energy and our best performance will be on Sunday. Hi, Bill. I wanted to ask you about um, three players who are finalists for the Hall of Fame. You're two of your former, former players, Randy Moss and Ty Law, and about why you think these guys are worthy to be elected to the Hall of Fame. And a third guy, Ray Lewis, the guy who I know you coached against for many years, and um, what you appreciated about him as a player that you had to coach against. Yeah, I mean, they're all great players. Put Everson Walls in there, too. Yeah, they're all great players, uh, different styles, different um, attributes that they have, but um, all great players and all certainly worthy of, or of the discussion. Um, yeah, it's hard for me. I don't really know what the criteria for the Hall of Fame is, so uh, it'd be hard to, to comment on that. But, I mean, I, I had... Great experience coaching those players. Uh, they performed very well, certainly at an extremely high level for me. I have tremendous confidence and respect for uh, all three of the ones that, that I coached and uh, Ray and many of the ones there that uh, I coached against. Hey, Bill. Uh, Dan Roach. Uh, just uh, your thoughts on getting Gronk back from the NFL concussion protocol and how good was it to have him back out there full go at practice? Uh, good. It's good to have everybody back. Just your thoughts on Gronk clearing and, and being with the team again? Uh, well, I mean, he's look; those things are really out of our control. So, however it goes, it goes, and um, hopefully, it goes well. So, we'll take a listen to the or talk to the the medical people, list them on the injury report appropriately, uh, based on what his status is, and and go from there. But hopefully, he'll be ready to go. Hey, Bill, so has he been cleared officially at this point? Uh, well, I don't think we've released the injury report, so whatever it is, it is. And what's your overall philosophy at, at this point of the year without many padded practice and too much <clears throat> physical play in practice, but maintaining that aspect of the game here into February? Um, my approach is the same as it always is, to try to do what's best for our team. So whatever I think our team needs, whatever I think their particular situation is, at that point in time for that, that week, that game, that preparation, that's what we try to do. Um, sometimes individual players have to, we have to take their particular situation into consideration uh, and maybe modify what they do, even though the bulk of the team uh, might benefit from something else. So we, we try to accommodate them as well. Uh, but in the end, we always try to do what's best for the team. Bill, what would the scouting report be from Bill Belichick, the coach, on Bill Belichick, the player at Wesleyan? Uh, got a long way to go, buddy. <laughs> Maybe I ought to try coaching. Quite a few people told me that, actually, so it's probably, probably good advice. I got that from a couple of coaches, football and lacrosse. Yeah. Got a better career in coaching than you got in playing. 
I'm sure that's true. Good afternoon. This is Richard Farago from Sport TV Hungary. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. sorry. Uh, as a coach, how can you prepare yourself to different game situations? Because you have to react differently if your team is leading, whether you have a large deficit, whether you have an injury. Is it coming naturally with, with the instincts as you have? Or is there a method? How can you teach uh, something like that? Or, or how to learn the different situations? Yeah, well, I think what you have to do as a coach, you have to prepare your team. Uh, for what to do in those situations, so it doesn't really make any difference if if I know what to do, or if the quarterback knows what to do, or if the defensive signal caller knows what to do. Uh, if everybody else doesn't know what to do, there's not enough time to communicate that to everybody in those situations. Usually, they happen fast. A lot of them are at the end of the game. A lot of times, they're with the clock running, and there's not even a huddle situation. So, uh, the team needs to know what to do in those situations. When everybody knows what to do, that's when you're well prepared. When everybody if everybody doesn't know what to do, then chances are you're going to break down in those situations. So it's not something you have to plan ahead of time for. And then the, the players on the field have to execute those when they come up. But there's not time to have a meeting and stand there and talk about everything um, before it happens. It just doesn't, just doesn't work that way. Hey, Bill, I was just wondering if you could give us uh, what you've seen from the Eagles special teams units this year. Uh, good, really good. Um, block a lot of kicks, rush a lot of kicks, uh, had three against the Giants, had a big pump block against Atlanta, um, explosive return game, uh, they cover well, um, kickers had a great year, so they're, they're a very strong unit, they're well coached, they're good in situations, they're good on um, I mean, just the normal plays, coverage plays, return plays, uh, they're a good rush team. Um, they, they present a lot of problems. One of the best units we've faced all year. Coach, uh, could you tell us what it says about the character of your team that you're... Over here, Coach. Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you. Can you tell us about the character of your team in terms of being able to come from behind? So last year's Super Bowl, the AFC Championship game. Yeah, but that doesn't really have anything to do with this year's but, team. But this, with this year's... Well, this year's team didn't play. I mean, we had a lot of different guys in that game. But the AFC Championship game, you're down by 10. About that ability to refuse to lose and keep fighting. Tell us about that. Well, it's I a mean, 60 minute game, we all know that, and um, you play for 60 minutes, so whatever the situation is, um, you play through it, and that's, we've been ahead, we've been behind, and that's, so of other teams, that's, that's just what you do, you just keep playing, and you work through all the situations, but I don't think last year's game, last year's situations have anything to do with this year's team, it's a different team, and we have a lot of different players on it, and I don't really think it has much relevance. But the games this year, yeah, those guys um, did what they did. We won some, we lost some, uh, but it doesn't really matter. We haven't played Philadelphia, and that'll be a completely different challenge against the Eagles, uh, whatever the situations are in that game, because we, we haven't faced them before. So that'll be all new for us, and we'll see how we do. Good evening, uh, Mr. I, I'm from Gunter Schramm from Sportax from Argentina. In Argentina, we compare Tom Brady to Messi or Maradona, and in the opening night, uh, Sportax asked Tom Brady what did he think about this comparison. I wanted to ask you, what do you think about this comparison between Messi, Brady, what do you think about Messi, and if you think that Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback in the NFL history? Thank you. Well, there's no quarterback I'd rather have uh, playing for my team than Tom Brady, so glad I have him. Bill, you've been asked um, a few times this week about influences in your coaching career. I'm just curious, though, on the, the scouting side of your job and the roster building, who, who kind of helped develop your philosophy there? Uh, I'd say a lot of that was really developed in Cleveland uh, with Mike Lombardi. Uh, we put together the scouting department there uh, after Ernie left. And uh, Dom Neely, who was our director of college scouting. Uh, but. Mike and I, with the help of, again, a great scouting staff, like people like Jim Schwartz, um, you know, were there, and, and coaches like Coach Saban, uh, Coach O'Brien, because our coaches had a lot of influence in the scouting system. We put that together over the course of that time in Cleveland. And um, 
Uh, I mean, not speaking it for Nick, but I, I know that in talking to Nick, I know that you know a lot of the principles that we um, developed there, um, he's used and certainly modified. And you know, many of us have, as we've moved along, have done that as well. Scouting systems, scouting um, uh, grades, um, identifying players, and uh, their certain characteristics, and how to how to how to put those characteristics, how to give them a grade, how to note them, how to how to um, Put some kind of a value on them and organize it, um, but that was that was really a lot of that was developed. Well, let's say all of it was developed for me uh, in in Cleveland, primarily with Mike and, and other people on his staff. Um, the Giants, we had a a system that was set up um, that there was some relevance to, but what we did in Cleveland was was different than that, and and um, so certainly what we do now is. A lot different than what the Giants, what I did. I mean, I learned a lot from being at the Giants for 12 years and the way that they uh, approached the uh, evaluation of players. Um, but at Cleveland, we kind of took things from, um, again, a lot of different angles. You know, Mike's personnel angle. Um, Nick obviously had a lot defensively, a lot of input. Uh, had a lot of input uh, in the whole process. Scott on special teams, uh, Ernie on offense. Uh, and you know, he's pretty involved in the draft when he was here with the Patriots. So we took a lot of those grading principles and, and tried to put them all together and rewrote the scouting book, the grading book um, in Cleveland and then redid it again when we came to New England in 2000. So that's, that's basically the history of that. Is that what you're asking for? Got it. Okay. Sure. Two more questions. Hey, Coach. Yeah. Can you give some inside information of you know how it is to coach uh, side by side with your son, and how it's been to watch him grow with the organization? Yeah, it's it's been great. Um, I think Steve's done a done a great job of certainly not easy um, being in the position that he's been in uh, for several years, both when he wasn't even officially on the staff, but then when he officially was. Um, I know that changed for him, but he's. He's done a good job. He's certainly helped me, give me a good perspective on um, things that he sees from an assistant coach, and um, you know, certainly a lot closer in age to the players um, than I am. And so, kind of that perspective of uh, players' needs and and uh, where they're at, um, and again, from an assistant coach's perspective, he has a good overall I think feel for things on that we do as a staff or uh, that we need or maybe things that um, I might need to address that I, I miss because I just I don't see him I don't see the point of view that he sees so he's been, he's been really helpful on that it's been good thank you hey Bill on your left uh, how impressed have you been with Patrick Chung's ability to stay on the field despite some bumps and bruises and just his toughness overall yeah Pat's really a tough kid there's never been any question about that um, I have no, nothing but the utmost respect for Pat and, and his physical and mental toughness. He's, things that he's been asked to do over the last you know, few years, um, been, we've asked a lot of him and, and uh, he's always delivered for us. And um, he plays a lot of plays. He plays a lot of plays in the kicking play game. He plays a lot of plays on defense and, and they're hard plays too. He doesn't get many plays off. He's. He's got a big responsibility on, on almost every play. We've counted him pretty heavily, and and uh, he's just done a tremendous job for us. He's, he's an outstanding player, and, and he's got a great uh, football instinct. Again, whether it's in the kicking game or defensively, he, he really he knows how to play. And there's a lot of things he does that um, sometimes you they're not the way you drew them up, but. But he sorts them out, figures them out, and, and makes a lot of good decisions. 